Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Cristiano Ronaldo has long been considered not only one of the best players in the world, but one of the best the game has ever seen. And Ronaldo has an incredible intrinsic drive to keep finding new levels, and this drive has led to him constantly evolving throughout his career, and has allowed him to achieve insane goal-scoring feats. So, in this video we take a look at the tactical evolution of Cristiano Ronaldo. But just quickly, if you're a football lover and you're new around here, feel free to hit subscribe for more videos like this and a lot more. And if you enjoyed the video, a like would be great. Now, let's get into it. The first Ronaldo we saw was the fresh-faced teenager who broke into the Sporting Lisbon first team at just 16 under manager Bologna. It was clear from the start that there was a great player there with a lot of potential. He was almost exclusively used as a pure winger on the right-hand side, attacking the byline and looking to cross. He had the pace, agility, as well as the incredible dribbling ability to impress first-time viewers. But that was one of the problems. He was criticised for being all dribble and no end product. And this was true to an extent, as in 25 league appearances, he scored only 3 goals. But his flashy style had its upsides, impressing Sir Alex Ferguson during a friendly to inaugurate the new Lisbon Stadium. He tore United apart in the 3-1 win, and this convinced Ferguson to make him the most expensive teenager in English football at the time. The plan had been to loan him back to Sporting, but his performance was so impressive that United kept him. Now, at Manchester United, his career can be split into two clear parts, pre-2006 World Cup and post-2006 World Cup. During his first three years with United, donning the number 7, Ronaldo wasn't quite reaching his potential. Again, he played out on the right wing looking to find the forwards with his crosses, but that was one of the problems. He had moved to a better league and he hadn't adapted his game, and was still seen as somewhat of a show pony, even once getting into an on the pitch argument with teammate Ruud van Nistelrooy because of his showboating. And the stats don't lie. In 95 league games, he scored only 18 goals, which is roughly 0.18 goals per game. And then, after a controversial 2006 World Cup, where he got club teammate Rooney sent off, he returned a different beast. He had grown into his physique, leading to increased on-the-ball strength, and despite getting boos at every stadium he visited, he was developing a ruthless streak. Very slowly, there started to be less stepovers and rabonas, and more end product. And importantly, Ferguson gave him more positional freedom, drifting infield more often, in the 2006-07 season, after Tevez joined the team, the front three was Tevez, Rooney and Ronaldo. Ferguson allowed them incredible fluidity, so Ronaldo wasn't stuck out on the wings anymore, instead he could often go central or even off to the left hand side. This made him harder to mark as he would find spaces everywhere on the pitch. His finishing ability also improved, as he no longer focused on scoring aesthetic goals but on just getting the ball in the back of the net. This meant that in the next 3 seasons, in 101 appearances, he scored 66 goals, or 0.66 goals per game, an incredible improvement. In the 2006-07 season, he was the league's top assister with 14, and got a Ballon d'Or nomination. The following season, he equaled the then record number of goals in a season, 31, and went on to win his first Ballon d'Or at just 23. At the start of the 2009-10 season, Ronaldo became the most expensive player of all time. Already an established star, 80,000 people showed up to his unveiling at the Bernabeu. And here we'll focus on the two main versions of him that we saw. Where at United, we had seen a fluid attacker, at Real he came into a more set system, mainly a 4-2-3-1. Initially, Kaka played in the hole, with Di Maria on the right and Raul or Higuain up top. This meant that the right was taken up and Kaka occupied most of the central spaces. So, Pellegrini and then Mourinho focused on honing him into the deadliest left winger possible. Ronaldo had spent some time there at United, so he was comfortable cutting in and looking to score. Kaka and soon Ozil would draw attention centrally, which would then open space for Ronaldo to attack centrally, often with dribbles and long shots. When the ball went wide on either side, he used a running start as an advantage, arriving in the box late to head home. When he did come in central, he drew defenders in, which allowed Ozil to find his other teammates with incisive passing. When defending though, he only dropped back if his team was under extreme pressure, meaning Madrid often had a lopsided shape when defending. But this played into Mourinho's game plan anyway, in making them perhaps the best counter-attacking team of all time, with rapid passes from defence to the waiting attack of Ozil, Higuain 
Di Maria and Ronaldo. Ronaldo was still one of the quickest players in the world and he blended this pace with dribbling ability. In these years, he moved out of the one of the best players in the world bracket and into one of the best players in history bracket, finishing as runner up for the Ballon d'Or as well as winning it twice. During these first 5 seasons, he made 165 appearances, scoring a ridiculous 177 goals, more than a goal per game. Other important stats to note are that as a mainly wide player, his chance creation was still present, with high assist numbers as well as key pass numbers. He still took many shots from range, but you can see a steady decline as once again he began to play smarter and smarter. He was still involved in the build-up play with a fairly high average passes per game as well as a fairly high dribble rate as he started from deep and looked to work his way into the box. He was becoming more and more ruthless and as he said, I see football as a mission, go to the field, win and make me better. And then we come to the second real version of Ronaldo. Ronaldo was smart enough to begin adapting before his age forced him to adapt. With Bayona at the club, Ozil was sold and they shifted to a pure 4-3-3. The slight change meant that Ronaldo would be positioned closer to the goal as where they had used a cam before, they now used two central midfielders. Bale for the most part liked to maintain the width on the right hand side and with his quality he attracted defenders which opened up more space in the centre. Ronaldo therefore started centrally more often, so Real used a lopsided 4-3-3 with Ronaldo and Benzema central. Benzema's unselfishness meant that he would often work back defensively in place of the other two. This became more pronounced under Zidane. The first thing Zidane changed was the amount of games Ronaldo played in. As the graph shows, he convinced the man who wants to play every minute of every game to take a rest occasionally in order to extend his career at the top. Secondly, when he did play, Zizi liked a 4-4-2 diamond, with Ronaldo and Benzema up top. Benzema went from important to crucial. With Ronaldo now a confirmed forward, he worked back defensively even harder. But in his new role, Ronaldo started higher up the pitch, and his aging legs no longer had to collect the ball from deep and progress it themselves. Now, he would drop only for attacking linker play, but aside from that, he would lurk in the box waiting for a fullback to cross or playing on the defender's shoulder waiting to be played in by Isco. He went from deadly winger to clinical striker. It's a change confirmed by Ronaldo himself, as he said, I'm different now, I'm more of a penalty box player, not so much on the wing. Because you score more goals from there, so I changed position slightly. It's been a natural change and it certainly helped keep me happy. This version of Ronaldo picked up another two Ballon d'Ors, taking him to the joint most in history. And the stats back up this evolution clearly. In this phase, he made 127 appearances, scoring 134 goals, again, over a goal a game. Due to playing high up the pitch, he had less opportunity to cross and create, so his assist numbers began to diminish. His shots per game remained within the same ballpark, but importantly, his shots from outside the box had diminished, meaning he was taking the same number of shots, but they were now of a higher quality. His reduced involvement in build-up play is visible in his reduced average passes per game as well as his average dribbles per game decreasing as it became all about efficiency and not flair. As he said, those moments when I went to the field thinking I'm going to dribble, if I'm honest, I don't have those moments anymore. But the stat that exemplifies his transformation is his offsides per game. Early in his Real career, he was usually well below one offside per game as he started from deep then looked to move forward. But now, playing on the defender's shoulders, that number almost doubled. But he still maintained that deadly streak, keeping him as one of the best players in the world. So was that the end of the evolution? From skinny dribbler with limited end product to a machine of pure efficiency? Well, at Juventus we've seen a new version of Ronaldo there as well. But to keep the video from being too long, that will have to be a dedicated video if you guys are interested. So like the video and comment if you're keen to see that. So that sums up the evolution of Ronaldo so far, but did we miss out on anything? Drop a comment below to let us know. This video was created thanks to your request in the YouTube comments as well as on Instagram. So if you have any video suggestions, remember to drop them down below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.